IG is checking connection. All right, letting people know we're coming. Come on then. Y'all, nobody's here yet, but I know y'all coming. IG is letting y'all know. The universe said, don't fret, they coming. Well, I don't know because IG, y'all been trying to play something going on with it. Again, please don't play us again today, IG. Don't do this. Hey, Soul Aquarius, Big Kari, True Gemini. Hi, love bugs. All right, Dex is here. Let me let me bring my guy. Are you welcome to our humble lit live? <laughs> hey, I really just really really quickly, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Soul Aquarius solely for simply having the name Aquarius in there. You know. You know, I'm an Aquarius. My birthday was like two weeks ago, and it feels like it was years ago at this point. Yeah, but come on in, everybody. Have a seat. Aquariuses are just a different breed of people. I, I mean, I love us for real. Okay, Moni. What, now, what, tell us. Tell us. You know, you just realize how great these people are, and then you every year I feel like I realize, I'm like, oh, this person's an Aquarius, this person too, this person. And it's just always great people. We, we definitely okay. we don't have no losers in our circle. Okay, who shot? Talked you recently for this to pop just, up. Just like people that I know personally, like, and they're posting like their friends and their family and stuff like that. I'm like, damn, this person's an Aquarius. I'm more that. So, so I, I mean, I get it when they say like an Aquarius is the best zodiac sign. That's for sure. Happy birthday, Soul Aquarius. Birthday was last mm -hmm. month. That means you're a February Aquarius. Y'all don't really do what it needs to do no. like that, but y'all are still cool to the James. No. The original ones. We're not going to do that. No, we're not going to do that. February Aquariuses are probably your best Aquarius, Aquariuses. I doubt it. Don't. Don't play. I don't. They shall not. Well, listen, because I'm with you. I'll be the same damn way when it comes to uh, <laughs> Leos. Because I'll be like, mm -mm, something about them August Leos. They're a little different over there. I, July Leos, we, we, we win it. And then, you know, now I'm in this dating game now. So, <laughs> like, getting comfortable oh, on the apps. Yeah. Huh? You're not that girl. What you mean? Like, I can't mess with you because you're no. some type of... No, not at all. Because I've always heard, like, shitty stuff in the past. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real life, dude. You be, tell you be telling him group chat business? No. Dill, I I basically acquired him as my dating coach. <laughs> he, he, will, he will be good at that. For for you guys, yeah. you know, uh, real life Dill is one of our friends uh, from from one of our industry friends, and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were all out together. And the two of them, they started talking about they're both dating in the dating world or whatever, and they start talking about it. And he started to yeah. give her. Pointers. He also has a podcast that runs live tonight on Facebook Live. It's called Views from the Chair Podcast, and you can also search it wherever you find yes, podcasts. Yes, guys, right. it is so entertaining. Like, when I'm telling you levels, it's levels to Views from the Chair it's Podcast. The, truthfully, Dylan is kind of like Toya, like, if she was a white man. <laughs> no, filter, <laughs> no filter with the two of them. <laughs> I was saying, if y'all want more extremities than this, go hop over and see Dill because Dill be saying sometimes, I'll be like, Dylan. <laughs> <That's your purpose. laughs> and that's coming for me. <laughs> but no, but back to the signs, it's funny because, you know, over time you'll hear people say shit about like Leos. Oh, they're full of it. I've heard people say they'll never deal with the Leo again and this and that. And I'm just like, yo, what are you talking about? Like, until I. I we didn't actually date, but I've run across in conversation a couple of Leo men. I said, damn, we all right. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't the women. I'm not going to claim it on well, all the women. I said, maybe it's something about August Leo, but them Leo men, child. You know, a lot of my like friends, are, male friends, are either Leos or Tauruses. They're all, they all uh -huh. those like two categories. Mm -hmm. like, they're all Kappas, too. So, uh, <laughs> Remember when <laughs> And type in with friendships when the you girl was like, I'll be if you don't look like, like this, stuff like that. That's yours. You got to be a Kappa and either a Leo or a Taurus. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, and and you can't be dark skinned because I apparently don't have any dark skinned friends either. I know. What's wrong with you? You okay? 
<laughs> Somebody <laughs> called you a crunchy roach when you was little no, and this stuff one, right here. No, not when I was little. Three years ago <laughs> when I was doing <laughs> No, but you know, I have to tell you, so this past weekend, right, I went over to a family gathering, like at my in-laws house, right? Uh -huh. And they fried chicken and fried fish. Yes. It's gotta stop. Like, I the outfit that I wore, I haven't washed clothes yet. The outfit that I wore to this day still smells like fried chicken. To this day. Well, why was you sitting up? Oh, well, it is winter. You can't sit in the house. I, I, I put it in the back room. I was like, I can't even have this in my regular dirty clothes basket. Like, I have to put this in the back room and I sprayed it down and stuff like that. And I lit a candle. Yeah. Like, what? If this, this is what this smells like. There's no way we should be putting this in our body. <laughs> like, and yes, this, and yes no. we should. And yes, we should. I want to ban on the fried chicken. No. And, no, it's never going to happen. Chicken, if you're going to ha have me over to your house and you frying chicken, don't fry it when I'm there. My dad is actually hosting a Super Bowl party this weekend. But you know what's crazy? So my family always hosts like a Super Bowl party, right? But okay. you the Super Bowl is earlier in February, okay. right? So, like, it's okay. connected with my birthday. So, it's like, oh, we're doing a Super Bowl party, and we'll sing Happy Birthday to Dexter. This yeah. year, at my own birthday celebration, and my sister is the one who has to have the Super Bowl celebration as a part of hers. This is a victory for me, guys. I've been dealing with this all my life, and I finally got a birthday celebration to myself. I'm so... <laughs> all your life, you had to fight for a birthday day celebration yes <laughs> yes <laughs> thank y'all for everybody showing up i think that's something going on with ig we got small but mighty are six people right here now is that what you're saying it doesn't show numbers for me really like you know there's no number and usually there, it shows number there's no number there yeah, no, it's something going on. It was being weird again today. And I noticed, like, even the traction on some of the posts. I'd post in my stories, and then it would disappear. And then it, it's being weird. So, honestly, I was afraid that once we got on, I said, shit, I hope they see us that we on. Cause the yeah, mine only says the comments. It doesn't even show, like, it doesn't show anything. You're not even seeing. Are you seeing comments? I see comments, yes. Okay. And that's it. Yeah, something's going on with it. I did check for a couple of updates, um, but there was nothing available. But, um, all right, let's get, I feel like. Can I tell you what, um, I, spent my, I, tell you what I spent my morning doing? I went to my favorite place on earth today. Like, Okay, tell us, tell us. I went to the dentist today, and I love going to the dentist. It is such a fun time for me. I enjoy it. Like, going to the dentist is fun. Do, okay. I it's not fun for me. I don't mind it. But what is it? Do you tell them to stop talking to you and to focus? Because I hate when your mouth is like wide the hell open and they want to have all the conversation. It's like, why are you talking to me? You know, my mouth is in the motherfucking grip wide open. You know, I can't talk. You're asking me that? You know, I don't mind that. You know, I've mastered talking with <laughs> stuff at this point. Like, I <laughs> When I walked in there today, I was like, I like, I love the smell of the dentist. I I just, I just love it. Like it was, I was like, oh god, it was like, and I haven't been just like you might have been like, you might have been a dentist or something, or like a creator of dentistry because for you to be like a dental civilian out here, you have so much love for it, Dex. When, when I sat down, or whatever, I was kind of annoyed because I want, I like to sit down and catch the scenery, get me a magazine, watch HGTV. TV or whatever. I just enjoy the experience. As soon as I sat down, the lady comes, she's like, are you ready to go back? And I was like, ooh, well, you're rushing me, but okay. <laughs> so, so the dentist for you is like a, a spa trip. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. It was amazing. And then, because you know what I like about it? Because I, I take care of my teeth. So like when mm -hmm. it's done and over with and they do the cleaning and stuff, your teeth, they're so much wider than they were before. Yeah. Then also the they're like, oh, you're doing such a great job with your teeth or whatever. And I'd be like, I know. <laughs> she up there with the hardcore dental blow off. Like, I know. Thank you. I do have one more thing to tell you guys, and you y'all will probably judge me. What I'm actually okay. first. What, what are you eating for dinner tonight? Honestly, I had a very late lunch. 
Um, I had a salad, grilled chicken, a grilled chicken cob salad. Um, but I do have some when I get the cheese because you know later on I'm about to blaze up. So I did give me a little side of mac and cheese, that good old Chick Fil A mac and cheese. I tell you, so that's probably I might have something. I don't know. I got like peppers and um, I got some peppers and I think some hummus left. Mm -hmm. So I'll pro I got to I'm back in the gym. So it's like I got to the weekend. And I'll go ham again. I put, yeah. <laughs> you what? I put you on that peppers and hummus. I put you on that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like mean, mom's catering love bug. Aloha. All, all the way from Hawaii. Um, yeah. I, um, I was in the grocery store yesterday. So I'm doing this thing. My wife and I are doing this thing where we won't buy out because it's it's got a little crazy. So we don't buy out or whatever. Like, and we're, it's a challenge we're doing this week. So, so I'm like, okay, like, let's cook things in the house so forth and so on. And it's not the healthiest okay. thing we're doing. I'm just trying to find things that make sense for me. And we yeah. don't eat the same. It doesn't eat meat. So, okay. well, like red meat and stuff. So I bought to have for dinner tonight hamburger helper. Do you know what that is? You know, you know, growing up, every now and again, I like me a little dirty hamburger. Helper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you get you put your cheeseburger one. Which one you get? I got cheeseburger one. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't had a hamburger helper probably in like ten years. Yeah. If, yeah, to be honest with you, and I'm so excited for it. Sometimes, and you know what? You know, damn it. I might bring Sloppy Joe back. That's always been no, my that's dirty. Not, I'm like, she was like, she's like, why don't you? She said, if you're doing hamburger helper, why don't you just do Sloppy Joe? And I was like, oh, I should, but I don't want to eat yeah. red back to back like that. So well, I, you can I, make I just a turkey make Sloppy Joe with turkey meat. I don't know. I, I you gonna need you know. that sauce with the turkey meat? You know, turkey can dry out sometimes. Like so you are gonna want that with the Sloppy Joe? I'll try that next time. Well, Dad, I might have Chocolate Joe this weekend. Oh, mm. It's been a long time. <laughs> gotta have, like, you know. Oh. You gotta have, like, wings and stuff for Super Bowl. Rotel. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Me we Mom's Cater is. About Rotel. Yes, but Me Mom's Cater is. Um, it's not 75 cents a box no more. Oh, what is it now? $2. Oh, in, the, in the ground beef that I got was six dollars. I was like, "Oh, this is expensive." <laughs> ah, sloppy Joe. Wait, the hamburger helper has become fine dining. <laughs> At this point, like, damn, well, that's a lot of money. Shall we? And you were right, Dex, about the um how things are going up. Because I'm like, I'm going to go. I had kind of chilled on. For a while, I wasn't eating out that much. Then I got in the bad habit of starting eating out again. You know what stopped me this past weekend? Hey, cousin Soph. Um, This past weekend, I went to my local spot, and I got a grilled chicken Caesar salad. Always substitute the, um, the croutons, and I'll substitute that for, for a, a bo hard-boiled egg. And I had a free... Um, order of, of garlic knots. That's the reason why I take the croutons out, substitute the the, 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 the knots. So the yeah. knots were free. Guess what the total was? $17. A look, $15. And I look for yeah. fucking salad. Yeah. Said I'll be making them from home now. <laughs> it, uh -huh. the, the, like food in the grocery stores is crazy, but it's even crazier if you go to these fast food restaurants. Like, or like, any type of restaurant, like it's just like, oh, okay, okay. This is what this is what y'all charging. This whatever it's got me thinking. Because also my fat ass earlier this week, I went to Five Guys, but you know, twenty twenty something dollars, and it made me think. After school, walking home, home to the um, walking home, you stop at the Chinese store. What the fuck happened to... Oh, no. That's what it was. It wasn't Five Guys. I was riding by a little corner store. Looked like that little snack store. They make some hot foods. They had the nerve to have a cheeseburger and french fry, like, special. Mm -hmm. Only $10. Only $10? That's what the fuck happened to the $2 cheeseburger special walking home from school? You get the $2... $2.50 with a day soda. What the fuck happened to that? 
You know, it's funny when I hear people talk about that. Like, I've never lived, like, I've never lived anywhere that had a corner store ever. And I always thought that that was like a myth almost. And I've never experienced that whole thing. Because, th like, my corner store used to be A plus and, and Wawa. Yeah. Like, they were at the end of the block on either side. And people would be like, oh, you can get these cheap cheesesteaks and stuff like this. And I'm like, and I'm like, one. I don't eat cheesesteaks out of gas stations, so I can't. Well, do they're that. not the gas stations. The the corner store is not the gas station. It's the bodega or the poppy or or the Chinese stores. Never, like that was never like my life. It was always gas stations at the end of the block, and you okay. definitely. Like, I mean, the cheesesteaks probably were five dollars there too, but you're not about to eat it. I don't get. I'm but not. You know, like, yeah, y'all eat out of Wawa. Y'all eat cheeseburgers. Yeah. And stuff. That's what you like to do. Not well, here's the thing. Y'all be, what? If it's not a little sandwich, a little something. Because <laughs> I'll never forget when I first moved back out here, Dex, and everybody was, I could not get over the fact that y'all eating, y'all really eating from the gas station. Like, that's what they, we do. And eat it's preferred. The, but then, and then I got, bread. but then I got a ball soap and a, or sandwich. I said, you ate a, you I mean, ate red. Wawa? Yeah. Yeah, I used to back in the day. It was a mixture of red and, and pork with the little meatballs, and I would get extra provolone, throw some oregano on top. Ooh. Mind you, that's how you know your taste you've grown up. I probably had, had one. I said, coming from the club or something, or a late night, might have been an event. And I said, you know what? Let's go old school. Take it back. Let's take it back. We're going to get a meatball sandwich from Wawa. I wanted to throw the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back meal, like if you're leaving like the club and stuff, you want something to eat. There's two things I would eat. I would usually eat Taco Bell or McDonald's. And McDonald's I wouldn't do right now. Taco Bell I probably would eat right now. I, I think I would eat Taco Bell to the day I die, honestly. And it Taco might be Bell for me, as long as it's a, a Chipotle around or a um Chidoba, it's I'm never going to no Taco Bell. Now unless I'm strapped, there's nothing around, okay, give me y'all still I'll be like, Y'all still sell the Chalupas? All right, give me one. The steak chalupa. Woo! Now you're doing too much. I'm the, I'm, I only eat red ground beef from Taco Bell. I'm not getting cute eating no steak or no chicken. No, like, I'm not, <laughs> and I'm definitely not eating the ground beef from Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell's the best fast food restaurant out there. Like, there's nothing that beats Taco Bell. Not Wendy's, not McDonald's. Nobody is better. Not even Chick-fil-A. Nobody's better than Taco Bell. Like, that, I, that, that's the hill I'm willing to die on. Go on. Come back in here. It might be time for a chair session. <laughs> we got to get to the root of, of this because it's a problem, Dexter. I don't want you saying this, like, around. I don't want you to get jumped on. Taco Bell is... Look at what I said. Taco Bell. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, that's not ground beef. It's ground... ground. It means vegan. <laughs> well, you're not... <laughs> Say y'all been playing on sleep. Y'all been fronting on McDonald's for years. Been giving y'all this damn fake meat all this time, and now y'all out here slap a damn vegan thing on it. And y'all, y'all too good. But go back to McDonald's and get that that fake ass meat that they've been giving you. Wait, somebody, somebody. Sophia just said um, the the ground beef comes in a bag. I don't. How do I put this? Yeah, okay. I don't care how they make the ground beef. <laughs> like, what, what they got to do? Carrying it? I don't. What they got to do with me? Uh, when I used to work at McDonald's and they used to be like, talk about, well, talk about does, it does keep me regular. <laughs> but when um when people be like, oh, it comes in a bag, this, that, and the third. When I used to work at McDonald's, I used to be like, oh, the fish was like frozen and they put in this little thing. I used to be like, but it tastes good when I eat it. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I care about. It. Did it taste good? Okay. Oh, and I, I would eat White Castle, too. Oh, right now, I would eat. I, you know what's crazy about White Castle? I literally cannot eat it. Really? I have tried. I get sick every single time. No, I don't. Because after <laughs> the clubs, back in the day, Jersey Shore, my boyfriend, come on, we're going to White Castle. And I'll be like, all right, that's where everybody wants to go. Multiple times I would try it. And after a while, I just had to stick to the fries. Because if I ate it, oh, a few minutes later, and it had nothing to do with the alcohol. A few minutes later, I'm throwing it right the hell up. Really? It, 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 it ain't, yeah, it's something about White Castle, I can't do it. I can't. Love White Castle. And I feel 
feel like I'm missing out on like a dirty meal. You know, I like a, you know, I loves me a good dirty meal. <laughs> <laughs> well, come, to, come, come over to death row. <laughs> oh, speaking of death row, we got some topics we could get into. Yes, let's, let's go, Dex. Kick it off with death death row. Granny, so, we can start with the Grammys. Um, okay. First and foremost, uh, the the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl this weekend. Yeah. The Eagles yeah. are. <laughs> The Eagles are taking on Andy Reid this weekend. I'll put it that way. They're going to go over there. People are favoring the Eagles to win the Super Bowl, so much so that the Philadelphia School District has decided that they're going to do, they're going to do a two hour delay. First, what do you think about that? I know I know you're excited about the Eagles going to the Super Bowl. The city is excited. Mm -hmm. The world's excited. Great. Now, as far as the School District of Philadelphia doing the two hour delay, what do you think about that? Call the whole day off. Them niggas ain't going. If they won. Even if they don't win, they still going to probably do something. But if they win, I was talking to my girlfriend at work the other day. She said, I was on Broad Street till 4 a.m. Shut everything down. I don't Shut the city down. I don't understand that. Well, okay. Because you're not part of the culture of that world. I'm not either. I don't get it either. This is me showing my bias and all that kind of stuff like this. I Last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl, obviously, I was not going down to their version of Broad Street. Like, I was too young. Yeah. However, okay. I do know how it feels to be excited mm -hmm. about a team or a sport or an athlete doing well. I get that. I understand being how to be excited. But what exactly does being out on Broad Street until 3, 4 o'clock in the morning do for you? Like, wh what it's is the, it? Like, it's the one of the rare moments, especially in this city, where there's some... Um, Uh-oh, Allie Kimber, that's what he cooking for dinner! You know he'd be in there cooking him and Trey. And I ain't seen Trey in here, little big girl. I'm going to pull up in your DMs, find out where you at. Crab legs, turkey wings, and green. Hey, can we discuss that for a second? Because that's another thing. Okay. When I went to my... Well, well, let's go back to Broad Street real quick. Then crab legs, turkey wings, and greens. Okay, so I think it's the camaraderie. Um, it's something, that, at least about Philadelphia. Every now and again, you'll go out and it... When a bunch of people are out and everybody's vibing like on the same wave, it is a fucking experience here and a good fucking time. But with that clusterfuck of people and then the city too, and niggas is falling through the climate shit, Brit, I don't want to be anywhere around it. Like I, it gives me anxiety, but I'm not going to knock it. And I get it for the people who are into it. But unless it's a check involved, you you're not catching me down. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I just, I just, I guess I don't understand why you. I can understand being down there for a little bit just to catch the like the vibes because like we don't we don't get this stuff that often. Like we no. really like it, like your team winning the Super Bowl, your city winning the Super Bowl. Like that doesn't happen every day. So like, uh -huh. I, I mean, I can understand like being out there for a little bit, uh, but <laughs> like. I don't know. I don't really like to be around too many people. Like, I just... Yeah. I, and then you live in Philadelphia. Hello? Well, it's so funny because with all of the violence we have, and this is another reason why I fuck with the city. With all the violence that we have and just the fuckery shit and everything, when it's a good time, all of that comes to a cease for however many of hours or the allotted time we agreed that we're just going to vibe out. And then before you know it... <laughs> It goes back to, all right, party's over. Bring the guns back out. I hate that this is how it is, but it is. Yeah. But 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 good luck, you know, to the Eagles. I think the city of Philadelphia desperately needs this win, honestly. Like, yes. it's, it's been bad. And honestly, mm -hmm. it's like good news. Like, I will take it. So yeah. please win. <laughs> yeah, I want them to win. I want this city to go the fuck up. Like, have a good time. I'm going to be cheering you guys on watching. But because of that, especially when it's like your city's team, take the next day off. Because here's the thing. You already know. It's going to be a bunch of motherfuckers calling out. Everybody, like, everybody sick COVID back all of a sudden. Like, everybody the fuck sick on the day after we already know what it is. So just shut it down for a day. Great. <laughs> And then they do it again for the parade. Yeah. Oh, also, people in Arizona, I, <laughs> I will say, though, like, this year, I'm not an Eagles fan, but, like, I've been able to appreciate the Eagles fandom this year. Yeah. 
God. I've been watching like coverage of like I was watching the news and they're all down there. Like all the real journalists are down there in Arizona covering the news and stuff. And I and I love to see that. Mm -hmm. All the radio hosts and they're down there and it's fun to like witness that and stuff like that. Absolutely, T Rose, go cowboys. <laughs> so as I'm watching it though, I will say that I'm like Philadelphia people are really entertaining to me. This one guy was like, you know, I, I don't think I'll make it back to Broad Street if they win the, the Super Bowl, but I already came out here and checked the polls, and these polls ain't greased. <laughs> it's not like, you know, you kind of, I'm into that. Like, that is, I like the ridiculousness of it. So, I mean, I guess good luck to them. I mean, we, you know, we also have the Rihanna performance, which yeah. she bring yep. somebody. And then, um, yeah, that's, and then the commercials. <clears throat> Somebody asked me the other day, what do you like about Philadelphia? Like, what are your top three things you like about Philly? <clears throat> and then what are your <clears throat> top your, your three things that you don't like about Philly? Guess what was in both of my categories? The fans, the sports fans? The Philly attitude. <sighs> like, good and bad, right? <laughs> like, you love it and you hate it at the same time? Y'all so fucking ignorant. Like, can't help themselves. It's like you can't take a Philadelphian any fucking where. But and, but this is why I love them at the same time. I hate that you guys are some of the shittiest fans, like how you treat a lot of these athletes. But then at the same time, I'm like, what they say what the kids say in the street here in Philly, dick up. Like you you making millions of dollars. Like, like the fuck. Like Crystal said, it, it's it's a Philly thing, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> while we're on the topic of the Super Bowl, though, Michael Irving, who many know is a former Dallas Cowboy player, he, <laughs> he is the turned sportscaster. He actually was pulled from the NFL Network because there was an incident reported where he was in his hotel room. There, I mean, hotel. He was, in, he was at his hotel, and he was at the lot in the lobby, and then a woman started to have a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. uh, Went back to his room. He got the next day. He got a call and was like, "We have to pull you because there has been a report of an incident mm -hmm. that happened between you and this woman." He said, "I only talked to this woman for forty-five seconds, and the conversation was absolutely non-physical." Okay. They pulled him. Were really upset about that because they're like, "You just pulled him, and there's no, we have no proof of anything that happened." But then other people are saying, "Like, better safe than sorry." What What do you think? It's so funny. It's it's because me and you. Slightly discussed this earlier. We know when it comes to the damn hey Senye's uh soul food. Funny thing is, really quick with that, get back to the Super Bowl real quick. I saw your uh car. I guess you guys were going to location today, and I know they're back uh, like around the airport area. So the next time you guys are there, I am going to stop and get my biddle. So yes, keep serving the Philadelphia community with all them good foods. Um, but okay, so how do I feel about this situation? So we all know that the NFL has been coming under fire for years about letting shit slide all of the time. Like when it comes to certain situations and certain people. Um, I think in this era that, we, that we're in right now, unfortunately, like when it comes to violence and crime and things like that, I am here for the swift action, like, okay, let's just move it. But it does give me, like, pause because I'm like, well, what is the real reason of you doing this? Do If it was Tom Brady, do we think the same exact thing would have happened, the golden boy? Um, what, I, I don't know, but what are your thoughts? I could be reading the room wrong, but I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm on the side of better safe than sorry because <laughs> – Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if they don't do anything about this, then it comes out later on that it was something that was like super serious and crazy. Like, I don't think that they need to fire him right now, but I do think you should pull him off the air just to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. I personally, like, I am very, like, cautious of these kind of things. Like, if I get on the elevator, if I'm on the elevator, right, and a woman gets on the elevator or, or it's like stopping for her to get on the elevator and I'm by myself, I get off the elevator. Like, I, I don't ride the elevator with women mm -hmm. if, if that's the two. I don't do that. So, like, just, it's, it's sad that, because somebody else said that, too, and I was just like, oh, I hate that we're here, but it's like, I get it, because I feel like that concept is so fucking ridiculous, but in the state that we're in, I, I, I hate this, but continue. 
So as for me, it's just like, and granted, you can't avoid conversations. You're a public figure. So like, there's no way coming up to speak to him that he could avoid that conversation. I just think that it's one of those situations where like, you you seemingly didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Like you seemed like that the conversation was in the lobby. So obviously there, if you touched her, people would see it. You He could have said something and you don't know how people can take those certain things. I just think that, he did everything that he potentially could have done. Like if he didn't touch her and he said he didn't say anything to her. I just think that unfortunately, because of where we are in society, like mm -hmm. you have to take this stuff serious. Yeah. And the unfortunate part about that is that like me, by me taking it serious means I have to sit you down. Like I can't mm -hmm. and have you on the network, unfortunately yep. right now. Yep. And like, and so we just figure it out, but now we're in a state also where there's kind of cameras everywhere out here. And, and though, like, like what, what the decision was made to pull them, but like you really could view like what happened and like make a determination and then like move on from it. It just seems like you're prolonging this situation too. Well, maybe they did view what happened and said, but oh, you, nah. But if you feel what happened, I just would assume that he wouldn't come out and deny that. If you know yeah. that they could see yeah. it, I'll be at a hotel room. Like, I, I know that it just but feels then, like. But we have R. Kelly denying that he still ain't do shit to them women. It's like, it just, it's just, at the end of the day, though, on a business side, you're not going to come in here and fuck my shit up. So on the business side of things, I am going to have to sit you down. And so especially if, like, cause a lot of these camera footage is like people see things, but a lot of the times you can't pick up what they're saying, what's being said. So, but even if I look on the camera footage and it does appear to be a compromising situation, let me go ahead and sit you down. Now, he was on the other side of the room and she was on the other side of the room and y'all didn't even connect and y'all was yelling across, get the hell out of here. Right. But for me, I would think that for them to make that decision, it would have had something to, that would have at least come across like, all right, something don't look right here. We're going to sit you down for a little bit. Let's get to the bottom of it. But I just hate that this is the state that we're in. And it, it grinds my gears every time I hear people say, I don't even want, especially men, I don't even want to get in an elevator with a woman or stand up because I might be accused of rape. And it's just, it's. Yeah. <laughs> um, while we're still on sports, I have one more sports related story that I have been getting a lot of heat from. Like I posted something oh. on social media today, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and people have really been very nasty to me, guys. What y'all been doing? What y'all been saying today? I wasn't. All right, I think I really wasn't trying to start anything. Okay. And I posted, you know, like I'm not trying to start nothing. More on that later. I'm not trying to start nothing. But we were watching LeBron James last night, and I like LeBron James. We were okay. watching him. Last night. He, you know, he plays for the Lakers. They have been doing too well lately, which is not a lie. It's very obvious that they're not. They have not been doing well. Okay. Hey, and he. Me? broke um, the all-time scoring record yesterday, which was huge. Like, I mean, this is a record that was set decades ago, yeah. and he broke that record. So it's like, oh, congratulations. Literally, in the middle of the game, they stopped the game, and then they started to do the, all the fanfare, and they were, like, popping bottles. It was a man. It was like, oh, wow. But then they lost the game. And I just found that very bizarre that we're celebrating this the way we're doing it. They literally, he, he, hit, the, he hit the record. They then played a commercial of all these public figures, Drake, Brianna, all these people congratulating him. And I'm like, oh, this is like a really big thing. But yeah. like they were losing when you broke the record and y'all lost the game. And it's just like, I, good job. But like, are we really, to me, that's just like insane. Like that that's is. A, a one is a one. A one is a one. <laughs> Fair. But we the, I, we're not leaving here without celebrating something. <laughs> I just thought it was so to celebrate the day. And, and and my wife is the biggest LeBron James fan, so like when I said it, she she was like, "What?" I was like, <gasps> I, I'm like, "Is it me?" Yeah. Is it? Sure. And I and I think, I think she's still mad because I said, "Are you going to do the hamburger helper for me?" And she's like, "I don't eat that." <laughs> I, guess, I guess I'm doing it myself. <laughs> Guys, I'm cooking my own food. <laughs> Don't be talking about bra 
love Ron to the missus. You know she don't play nothing about that. You sound like the people, though, who was mad at, I was, I was, we'll get into the Grammys. But when Beyonce was like, they were like, well, she still ain't won album of the year. My nigga, she just won, like, more Grammys than anybody ever in life. Y'all there, have to calm we'll down. Talk about that in the Grammy situation. I'll, I'll, yeah. Yeah, we, but really quick, before we uh, move on into the, I guess we can go to the Grammys next, naturally. You wanted to mention about Ali Kipper, yes. the, the menu of choice for the night. I hope you're still here, our guy, uh, to, to possibly defend yourself or add to the conversation. But he said he was having well, what turkey. collard greens, crab legs, turkey legs. Yes. And yeah, that thing, that was the menu. Yes. And this is, I mean, I can't speak. I've only been to, like, Black households for dinner. And okay. I noticed, not my family, but I noticed the rest of y'all be doing something that I'm not trying to start nothing, but enough is enough. Okay. This is how meals are supposed to go. A meal is supposed to be your meat, He's your still veggies, here. your starch. So you, jam. Go ahead. Steak, you would do mashed potatoes and okay. you would do broccoli or asparagus yeah. or whatever your choice of vegetable is. You can't do two meats. Why you can't, can't you? You can't do two Two meats, like, uh, like you gotta get protein. Huh? Protein. You, you know, we put muscle on. You gotta protein it up. No, you cannot do two meats. You cannot do two meats. You can't have crab legs and turkey. You can't do that. Like you have to either have if you have crab legs, your meal with crab legs is the crab legs. You have some corn. You have potatoes. That's it. Like, that's your meal. Y'all, Doctor Fauci. Mother. Like this is how we cook in my life. Like when you make when you make um spaghetti, spaghetti meatballs, or whatever, you can have some garlic bread with it. That's it. No fried chicken, no fried fish. Well, you know You're how not... I feel about that. It's a what? that's not a what's not a meal. Spaghetti, fried fucking chicken, fish, and they what they be making cornbread. Yes. That's, I need y'all to stop. It's too much. Where, you, you know the thing that bothers me the most about that meal in particular? Where the Fuck, you ain't got no vegetables? Well, what if vegetables gonna fit in? <laughs> you no, yes. alligator. So y'all just decided to skip the veggies. Alligator Nothing? Said the turkey wings are tomorrow. I shamed them into changing them in. Y'all very. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he said, I'll, I'll save a turkey wing for tomorrow, but it's getting cooked. I might, I'm gonna taste test it though, but I'm gonna eat the wing tomorrow to crap. Cause you know, you, we learned a couple weeks. Couple months ago, you cannot, you do not eat crab legs the you, day after you can't warm you them up. Can't do none of that. <laughs> um, um, Marjan said, "Who came up with this rule? I don't know, like Obama or something. I think it's like a law. Like he wrote it was like, that damn Doctor Fauci yeah. that did it. Yeah, him. Like this is. Well, so I don't know nothing about in the natural. I, I, let me just let y'all know something. Hi, Marjan, baby. <laughs> But then ask the question, um, what about international food? I want you to know who you're talking to. I eat Taco Bell. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just not that guy. I'm not very cultured over here. Very stupid. International, well, it, it's very clear. I'm sure, I mean, looking at the body types between yeah. us and a lot of internationals, it's not as many wide backs. Over they, there. <laughs> they, they doing something right. <laughs> they're doing something right. <laughs> and, and they walk it. They take walks. Not our asses. We're, I'm going five minutes down the road, get in the car. <laughs> so Nona Britton 7 said, most times when people do more than one meat, it's so that they don't run out of meat. And some people don't eat seafood. Okay, if you have four people in your household, you probably won't run out of meat. You probably Well, what if I'm... Because you know how we do. We make dinner a lot of times on Sunday dinners, and you make a couple a week, but that's for it meets, and that's for it to stretch to the least to, to, to Wednesday. Well, in my in law's house, the menu was fish, fried fish, fried chicken, steak, salmon, and there was one more meal, oh, and chicken, like baked chicken. How many people was that at the house? Like 10? Yeah. Yes, that's that's more than reasonable, Dexter. You're being ridiculous. It's, it's Sunday. It is not Thanksgiving. Because if you do that on a regular Sunday, what the hell are you doing on Thanksgiving? Well, that, that's what our you know with us it always you Sunday dinner for us. My one girlfriend I told her, she said was talking about 
you know, our plates and how the diabetes and because we always eat like this. She said, every, every, I get Thanksgiving once a week. Be safe, uh, me, mom's catering. No, I, I, I think that is so inappropriate that people eat like this. I think you should really, we, we got to scale it back. Well, no, if I'm cooking for 10 people, yes, I'm going to make sure there is, if I'm cooking for 10 plus more people, it's probably going to be three to five different meats there. And then I'm going to load up with the sides. But you got to have like three to five different meats. Now I feel like there's like a beef within my family now. Because usually like my wife and I would host. Like we would do like the hosting or whatever. And when we host, we do it our way. Like how we eat or whatever. And like last week, my sister-in-law was like, oh, I'm going to host it over here or whatever. And like we're like, okay. So we went over there and it was this situation. Okay. The last time we did something, we had a taco night. And like they were like, oh, we're going to bring this, that, and the third. And I was like, no, no, no. I just want tacos like i don't want chicken and all this other stuff just tacos because it's taco night now i did have a variety of types i have like the beef the chicken all that kind of stuff like that the types of tacos but it's just taco night no fried chicken no fried fish we're not doing it because your cousins don't oh well they ate it but i'm sure they probably they probably and you know what else we do we'll make our we're gonna make something at home so when we come back we got we got why we can't want. you just eat the tacos like that's what you were inviting they, they me and they ate the tacos, and I'm sure it was amazing. But I'm gonna go home, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get these greens <laughs> right afterwards. Allie Kipper said turkey, roast beef, fried fish, crab legs on Thanksgiving. We did it all. My and Thanksgiving, I'm okay with it because I want the options and yeah. the variety. I think that's okay. But some people doing that same thing on regular Sundays, and that well, yeah. really, some people do that thing on a Wednesday, and that's okay. That's the, I'll give you Sundays. Do what you do. It's all. Mm -hmm always been at least in us our tradition go off but you can't be doing this on a fucking wednesday you okay well they do, and, do. And they did it sunday and wednesday yeah. so um, you ate all that motherfucking shit from sunday we here wednesday and you you gotta do part two um entertain me said that she she said this is coming from the man who eats helper <laughs> and taco bell but let me just say by that same definition of that, how I'm saying that I do that, I would eat a hamburger helper only. Y'all would eat hamburger helper and Taco Bell together. Y'all do too much, and I don't. And that's just what it is. Yeah, y'all would literally go and get the food, and then go across the street to Wendy and get more, and just sit there and just eat everything. Like, I just, well, sometimes you gotta mix it up because the fries is better sometimes from one place. So I'm gonna get the burger here and the fries there, and then we gotta go over here and get the taco to make the perfect meal. I've done that before. Yeah, you, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, you would never do that with me because I would have a fit. If I'm standing in multiple drive through line or driving through dri multiple drive through to get uh, picking items, no, thank you. Go cook. Well, you can, you can say, tell me what you want. When I bring all the good fixings for my favorite place <laughs> and one meal, don't you touch it. Don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> no, because you, you were supposed to get in them three drive throughs <laughs> just like I was supposed to. And no, you can't have nothing. She said, what kind of slaw that you have at Taco Night? Lettuce. <laughs> Dom, you making me mad now. <laughs> Dom, please don't get this boy mad. You know how he get. You've been knowing him long they, enough. They, you're supposed to have, like, the lettuce, the, the, the slaw that they be having at the restaurant. This is, not, this is my house. This is not no restaurant. You're going to get the lettuce yeah. and put the... I guess some tacos do have the slaw. I'm not doing none of that. I'm not doing no. it. This yeah. basic. <laughs> I'm not no motherfucking chef. You should have went the mototherfucking uh, dos segundos or a nejo yourself if that's what the hell you want. I'm not getting fan. Ain't nothing pickled over here. I ain't pickled nothing for your, your taco top. I'm not doing all that. Like, you were eating. Come on now. I mean, the same tacos I make over here is the ones that you will be making at your house. And you are not doing all that. Although I do do cilantro and um onions okay. and onions. I do do that. All that right. A little... But listen. When I go to people's houses and they have all those fixings together, I am thoroughly impressed and I'm going to enjoy it. And you the real MVP and go ahead. I need you, Mike, to plan my parties because I'm not doing it. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. But I'll let extras. I, well, well, I will say, though, like, I'm the tacos, I think, comes with margaritas. Uh, and, I, and you don't have to. I'm going to Britain. She says she's going to um, uh, Bible study. Yeah, go and get your soul cleansed after this, sweetheart. We love you. And bring some bring some of the Holy Spirit back for us. Bless us. Tell, tell Pastor Hack. HQ4 
KKDS just joined. If you have a minute, we would love for you to come on to the show. Like we have not yes. like come on to the show. A request to come on. We would love yes. to actually Raw, can you please come on the show? Please let us know. Give us a little wave if you're with it. I love how this show this show, we will have an itinerary and then it just goes left. But this is what this is why I love it so much. I love you guys. Now we're going to shrimp and fish tacos. You know what? Back in the day. I never, I thought it was disgust. like, who the fuck y'all are net, child? I was, my dumb ass was missing out. <laughs> On the fish ones, not shrimp. I don't eat shrimp. I think shrimp is nasty. Okay, see, I love shrimp, but I'm, them fish tacos, woo, ain't no better taco than a motherfucking fish taco. I don't care what nobody say. Well, my, my teens, I don't know what the hell I was talking about in the early 20s. Ground, she had it wrong. Ground beef is that girl for me. All right. He said, okay, he's going to go live with us. He tapped, tapping in, tapping in. And, and make sure um, your background is. Arjanta, and this is why you also, now how you want to sing, put your hand up and then decline. Get your ass in this house. <laughs> uh, I guess we can go to the next time. Oh, the Grammys. You want to touch the Grammys real quick? Yes, let's go ahead and slide into the Grammys. Uh, I mean, what Beyonce made history. We saw that the most, which we already touched on, the most Grammys of all times. Even though the naysayers were still not happy, she's never won Grammy of the Year or Album of the Year. Now, I will say the album Album of the Year situation. I kind of understand where they're coming from because mm -hmm. basically, how it's it, it, it's not the first time mm -hmm. that it's happened. Second, or third, or fourth time. Like this is kind of like a consistent thing. And I think that it, like, a lot of people are saying, like, they bring Beyonce to this award show. They promoted that Beyonce is going to be there. I even saw that they CBS said that their ratings, their viewership, I'm sorry, dropped, um, increased 70% when Beyonce showed up. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you can't say that the girl's not giving you eyeballs. Like, she's definitely bringing eyeballs in there. And every single year, it's like, we promote this, promote this, promote this, and we give you all these awards, all these yeah. awards, R&B, best this, best this, best this. But then when it comes to the big one, it's like, yeah, but you don't get that one. Yeah. And to say that a person has, has, has the most Grammys of all time, just to say that and put that out there, and then to say, like, this same person has never won the big one, this person has never won album of the year, which is the biggest award you can win. Mm -hmm. it, that's a step that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, like that's like one of those things where it's just like I beat every level. I've done everything y'all asked me to do, but when it comes to this, I'm gonna always get passed over. Yeah. And it's happened multiple times. Taylor Swift, it was Beck, it was Adele, and now Harry Styles, and it's just like it just feels almost like insulting. And yeah. I can understand why people are a little like salty about it, but I do think people are taking it a little too far when they're saying you shouldn't yeah. even get the show no more. Well. <laughs> Uh, still, still be back. Awards there, and it's still being she's yeah. recognized here. So, so I can understand why she would want to go, but I could also understand why, like, she would be like, "Damn, y'all gonna slight me again?" <laughs> like, you know, what is so funny, and I, I hate to say this, I, I don't want to feel like I'm skewing against Beyonce or anything because I absolutely love her music. But when you say the album of the year, the context is supposed to be. From the Ruta to the Tuta. I look at the album of the year, there are absolutely no skips. The album that was up is Renaissance. It's great. It is. But I'm not going to hold you for my listening ears. This is just me. After a certain, maybe about song five, six, I kind of tuned it out. I think that's. Um, that's a fair assessment, and I do feel the same way. Like, I've said this previously mm -hmm. before the situation even came out. I've said that. However, that's an album that I heard. Like, usually they're, like, when they put some of these people in there, and this is me. This is, like, my yeah. ears. A knock against anybody else. But, like, there's other albums where I can't even give this because I've never even heard it. I and know. that's why I also, like, don't get into this conversation because I'm like, well, I've heard this one. I didn't hear that one, so I probably can't really judge it. But also, mm -hmm. I have more of an interest in this person and not yeah. much in this person. So, like, like, I don't think I'm a fair person to judge that. Like, I have yeah. to, like, be quiet. <laughs> like, like, I don't... And I'm with you with that. That's why I was like, I don't say too much. Some albums I, I absolutely love. I mean, and let's be... Some, 
And I've li I've listened to Beyonce's music a lot, but and I will try to give the albums a spin, and that's hard from beginning to end to like no skips. It's kind of rare, so I would like to know why. I feel like this time they were like the the I guess the Grammy people, the the people who sit on the board. <clears throat> They probably were like, well, she's about to make history. Let Okay, you're going, we're giving you something. Let's give this to somebody I, else. I think that that's true, and I hate that. Yeah. I think Katie to be like, yeah, yeah we're going to do something. I was like, well, do I deserve it? Because if I don't deserve it, I mean, like, if I deserve it, I would like my flowers. Yeah. Like. I mean, because, I mean, we even think about, you no know, Miguel years ago, if you ask me, Miguel is one of the greatest artists out there who clearly does not get enough of like his shine, his dues, his justice when it comes to it. So I think what I'm going to start doing with the Grammys, which is what I usually try to do with the Oscars, once they like come out, I think I'm going to like start next year, go and listen to each album, like and only for album of the year. But just give them a listen and then to be like, not that my opinion really matters, but to yeah. be like, yeah, they deserve that. I, I, I would recommend not doing that. Because I want to make me hate the music industry even more. No, because they, then you get invested in it, and then you have this mm -hmm. opinion that like literally makes sense. You did the work, you did the research, and then they do what they do. Then you're gonna be yeah. those people. Don't go to the Grammys <laughs> no more. This don't make sense. because like you're gonna be hurt. Like I, I invested in this. No, I'm, right. I'm, I'm not gonna get hurt at all. Cause I'm like, ain't no money coming out my pocket. I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that time of doing like you did your due yeah. diligence listen to the albums and stuff like that and then to know mm -hmm. that and granted it's still just your opinion but to yeah. know you that you gave a fair shot to everybody and then when you listen to it and the person wins and you're like this i don't understand how you okay you get no explanation yeah you get no how they know and, and it's just kind of like well then why did i even bother listening to all this stuff well see i, I love to for me i that's why for me this is doable mm -hmm. Because it's not like a movie. The Oscars, it's a little bit different because you have to sit and you really have to pay attention and you can't really move around. I can put an album on. I can clean my house. I can sage. I can cook. I can do other things and still listen and comprehend like, oh, I like that. Okay, run that yeah. back. So I feel like I'm going, I am going to implement this next Grammys around because it's, I'm always listening to music anyway. I might as well see who's up, who's nominated for a uh, Grammy of the Year and give it a spin. I'm, as much as I personally can't stand Taylor Swift, sure, she's a nice girl, but she does nothing to me. I'm not going to take away from her pen. Her pen is fire. I'll, okay? do, I'll do it with you, and we'll, we can do a live review on the podcast of each album. And then when the Grammys is over, then we'll just we'll say what we think. Yes, I, I like that. I like that idea. Next Grammys. Coming to you. This is what we got. <laughs> we're looking, looking for a sponsor for this too. So if you want to sponsor this uh thing, you know somebody wants to sponsor. We we we're down with it. Come on, Taylor. You know we got. I'm somewhat beefing with you. You don't know that, but I. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, so what else happened in the grand is the uh uh one of the big no's. Oh, Beyonce was late, <laughs> which I, was great. I don't know if she was even late though I, I really think it's like i'm showing up at this time and this is what it's going to be i mean i can see that because i'm beyonce what are y'all going to do but no that my and depending on what time she left you know don't make that la traffic especially any time that there's an event going on if you don't time it right but then at the same time traffic girl why are you ain't getting the chopper you running late you got the money y'all billionaires it's very hard to believe that she was stuck in traffic, especially with Jay-Z knowing that he was going to have to perform that night. I find that very hard to believe. They planned it. Yeah, because I'm like, at the end of the day, cause, well, the thing that I did love about it, though, in that moment, because people love putting her on a pedestal, even when Beyonce is late, the show must go on. What are we going to do? Wait? Because <laughs> you listen. You know, I was, can't do it. No, no, no. It continued. She came in, was gracious about it. I did love how the dream. We had a real black moment on the Grammys. The Grammys was very black this year, but a black moment. Grabbed the uh, first award. She well on the stage that they presented for her, and he was like, "Oh, she on nigga time." <laughs> I thought that was good. I thought well, I thought that was ridiculous. I'm sorry. I thought the the, the hip hop tribute was good. Yeah, the Motown tribute. I I thought it was over. Overall, like a pretty decent show, and like I, I like especially being in February, mm -hmm. seeing like the like 
like history, like being performed and being showcased there. I didn't yeah. care for the Sam Smith thing. I don't even care to talk about the Sam Smith stuff either. I also did not enjoy seeing Madonna. I think that she just, she just, it, it's sad actually because like you've done so much to your face and into your into your body, you and crazy. I can tell that she's defensive about it too. Like you don't like that people are saying the negativity about you, but like you did this to yourself. Stop doing on the dumb shit then you did this you did this madonna nobody it's like you're always out there even her whole thing of um her saying because madonna you are such a legend all this should take is for you to step up on the stage and the crowd goes wild you can tell she didn't like it was like little to no reaction with her going on the stage and every time she would say something that was supposed to get a draw and it didn't. It's like you're getting an attitude with the crowd, bitch. Are you gonna go home? Like we really don't need you out here. This is not what legends are made of. Cher would never. Yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. I agree. A Patty Labelle would never. Auntie Dion would never. Mariah, I need Mariah Carey might though. Yeah, Mariah. Well, <laughs> but here's the thing. Then what, what, what's her army? with mariah because the antics and the ridiculousness like we find it very funny so people are going to go wild with madonna it just comes off very kind of pathetic like do you not know who you are it's like she wants to she's still in like 1980s and 90s when she was hot and it's like you can't stay there madonna and it's sad because she is such a a legend she is but she does not act like it and it really pains me to feel like this about her because you know me i love you know i love old school tea and the legends when they come i'm all about give them their shine but i can't with madonna because you've turned yourself into a fucking sideshow at this point in time and then then another thing i see people talking about they were saying like there was some confusion between um viola davis and beyonce but viola davis also won for in in she won a Grammy, so she's officially an EGOT, third okay. black one. This I want to say award, but it's not actually a, an award. But she's the third black woman to have this okay. honor. Um, EGOT, yes, yeah. the BBC posted um, <laughs> of her and Beyonce, and, and I think it just goes without saying that like it's just this stuff like this doesn't happen to white people. I'll just say that mm -hmm. it only happens to us, and we, even when we post stuff, we don't even do this to them. So somebody's doing this on purpose. Exactly at this point because how the fuck and i know some people are like well it's probably a, a kids working in there but who the fuck don't know beyonce and viola david and it's two different generations at this point they're really beyonce more than viola only because i feel like beyonce is just international i don't think there's a point on the planet that you could say beyonce's name and people are like who so i'm like at this point you're doing this on purpose because it does not make sense well please stop doing this to us because like you said that and it's very disrespectful in black history month at least here in the states i know that's not everywhere else but still the grammys happened in the states so it's black history month stop doing this yeah i don't know if you're mad i don't know if you're trying to click bait i don't know if you're just trying to get a reaction but it's stupid please do not try y'all been coming up off of black bodies for all of america stop it but i think that's why they do it with, though they want the clicks they want the attention for it and then they can become they can come up like oh it was just an oversight but uh -huh. like, realistically speaking even if you're 12 years old and you've never heard of beyonce beyonce or viola davis like this was a televised event and you're reporting yeah. on something televised so you saw these people if you did your homework yeah. or you could simply look them up before you post anything about them that's just journalism mm -hmm. not all of us have 10 years of experience in journalism journalism but you really need one to know to look something up before you post it. Shit, you don't even gotta be a journalist. Just listen, just open your eyes, turn on TV, turn on the stream, like something, you know? 10 years of journalists, everybody ain't got it though. And then like even looking at Viola Davis, looking at Beyonce, do you think the voice that Beyonce has will come out of the body of Viola Davis? Just just naturally, I just wouldn't even expect her to sound like how Beyonce sounds. Yeah, like just, just it's gotta stop. But you know what would make this go away when it happens? I don't want, I want people to stop giving it so much attention. Yeah, 100%. That's what needs to stop. Yep. Because when you see it, it's like, it's just removing the power from them. They're doing this for a rise out of people. Don't give them the attention. Don't even really, I mean, we're talking about it now, but don't talk about it because you're yeah. just stupid. Because 
See, that's what they want. They want you to have these conversations and stuff like that about it. But what if we what if we saw it and we just we just instantly in our in our on our own took away their credibility? Like people mm -hmm. who like people who say that the Queen of England died and she didn't really die. For me, I, I'm not gonna go back and forth with you. I'm gonna unfollow you and yeah. you lost your credibility. I would never follow you, your page again. It's done. Well, you know, I'm I'm still on it, but uh -oh. it's it's just the don't understand if you're going to call yourself a journalist or like these are the facts it's okay i feel i hate when people stand on shit no this is exactly what happened and da, da, da. I'm like it's okay to be like hold on it did not happen in front of your eyes so in case if it didn't happen in front of you anything plausible anything could be incorrect information and it's nothing wrong with saying damn i had that wrong i apologize but when you double down on it that's what make you look makes you look like an idiot you look stupid you're not god bring it back yep. calm down you make mistakes it's fine Ooh. hey jeff but um, what? Uh, one more thing. Oh, Freudian slip. We'll just say this one more uh, since we kind of got into it with that. Um, this is going back to the playoffs now that we know our Eagles are going. But when they were, it's called the, the NFC East or one of the damn <laughs> games. I don't know. You know, I don't know sports like that. <laughs> but cameras uh, caught. Uh, Tony Romo was commentating. I forgot. I know it's on one of my notes, or was it? Anywho, Tony Rumbo was commentating Do you, uh, okay. yeah. the yeah. Bengals, the Bengals, and the the Chiefs game. Do you know? Um, do you know who Tony Rumbo is? Jessica Simpson's ex husband, boyfriend. But do you know what team he played for? Was it the Cowboys? Yes. Good job. Yes. <laughs> 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 That's when they were blaming Jessica Simpson, and it's funny too because I say Jay, but I was a hundred percent a part of this, blaming her for making the game. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> hey, Kevin. Um, yeah. So Tony, he was saying there, hey, love bug, Kiva, eight eight eight. Uh, huh? I said Kevin, and it's Kiva. It could be Kevin or Kiva. But we know all the love is there. Hey, baby. Um, settles holds, man. I saw you pop on. Um, hey, love bug. Um, but while he was commentating, a Freudian, a possible Freudian slip came in. So was he's it? telling, you know, explaining of what's happening on the field. And at one point in time, he goes, um, he was, I guess the play was something amazing or whatever, because there was a lot of excitement going on. And all of a sudden he goes, yeah, because right there you see it's three, I mean, three guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> No. <laughs> and I said, okay, because you know me. I love to get the benefit of the doubt. I love to. So I said, all right, let me rewind the back real quick. Play it back. No. One, two, three, niggas. <laughs> wow. What, like, what was the immediate reaction of everybody else? There was no real reaction on it because we didn't see him. He's just, it's doing the voiceover at that point in time. But you can tell he caught it right then and there and backed out and just went a different direction. But you knew once you ran the stick back, you knew what the fuck was about to come out your mouth. You think now, my, that word like often? If you're saying it around the fellas, now it could be part of me feels like it wasn't the hard ER he was using it with. That makes it worse to me. Like if you use the if you use the A, it's worse because if you use the ER, that means you're just doing that. Like when you're cursing people out, you're mad at them, you're going off on them. You use it then, racist, but whatever. I get that. If you use the A, that means you'd be singing it in the songs and everything like this. <laughs> you really <laughs> nothing. Every young boy said it can travel, they saying it all the time. We're bonding. Oh. Shout out to Kyrie Moses and uh, Brett for watching as well. Brett is the one who told me that I was an acquired taste. Remember that? Oh. <laughs> Brett, how are you? I have not seen or heard from you in a month of Sundays. How are you doing, baby? <laughs> <laughs>
our next, our, our choir takes next. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Michael um, Hubbard. How you doing, baby? Um, but yeah, so I think, but you know, sometimes some of the homies, they be like, they get your friend, your white friend's passes. I don't give none of my white friend's passes. Sometimes I will test my white friends to be like, go ahead and say it. And if you, out of here. Oh, yeah. Um... You can't wait to say, you look at, like, this is your moment, and don't get comfortable. I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't have any. I know. Yeah, I do. I'm not that's cultured. Every culture that I like, I'm not a culture person. That's it okay. You stay in your bubble. It's okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll get out and test the 31 flavor. Somebody's got to test them. I got you. What is cultured about me, Dub? My best friend who's watching, he texted me today. We were talking. He's like, I'll be in town for Cinco de Mayo and we should go have drinks and stuff like that. So that technically shows how cultured I am. People associate me with Mexican culture. So I am. And the Mexican probably look at your black ass and go. They look at you with these tacos and this Mexican culture, how we look at y'all, y'all other saying nigga. No, they do not. Because when I'm at the restaurants, they be like smiling. They be proud that I'm there. They're happy. But usually the restaurants you go to don't know Mexicans on them. Do you know that? <laughs> ain't, no, ain't nothing Mexican about it but the name on the door. Ain't, no, ain't not one Mexican in back there. Wait, can I tell you something? This is the last thing I'll say and we can go after this. Okay. Guys, I just need you guys to say a prayer for me. Prayer. I, Come I, on. I'm, tr I'm getting, I'm, I'm obviously getting through it or whatever. And this is like some personal news or whatever. I am getting through it. It's still in the early stages or whatever of like, you know, obviously when things hurt you, they hurt you or whatever. But I am getting through it. And, and I've been obviously talking about it through therapy. And I've been talking, like, surrounded by friends and family talking about it or whatever. But if you're in the Philadelphia area, you probably know we don't yeah. have Mad Maxes, and they closed the last one. And I am just beside myself. And I really would appreciate you guys for well, your thoughts and your prayers and everything. Man, That's during this just stick to Taco Bell, baby. The glory days of Mad what? Max has Wait, been it's, gone, it's gone about 10 years back. We at this point, they were just taking up real estate. Let's be honest. Well, guess who, guess who was buying it? Yeah, me. me. And I don't know why. The last motherfucking burrito I had from there, I said, where to meet at? Y'all just going to put them up. Y'all going to disrespect the. That's how you know I know Mexicans in there. Y'all just going to disrespect me and put a whole motherfucking thing of rice in here I, and one bean? I, I never ate Where to meet at? Well, I've never ate burritos from there. And guess what? Now I'll never be able to eat a burrito from there because they closed. Like, this is so what? devastating. What were you eating from there? Something not Mexican, I'm sure. I what were you eating? Tell us. Nachos. I was eating tacos. I was eating wings. I was drinking the drinks. Where they no, got wings at Mexico? Nobody in the world. <laughs> nobody in the world makes margaritas like they do at Mad Max. Not even me. And I make the best margaritas I've ever had. But no Are margaritas really Mexican though? Like did they make that? The margarita and even burritos, I don't even think that's really Mexican. I think that's it some is. gringo shit that, you know, we try to most of the stuff that we, we coin as Mexican isn't even really no, it is. Mexican. It is. Okay. <laughs> it's on the menu, so obviously it's Mexican. <laughs> I don't want a menu. Trust me. <laughs> oh, Rob, I'm mad at you. He on here, HQ kid. We tried to bring your ass on here, and then you gonna, and then you gonna bounce. Somebody said Plaza Azteca is so good, and the owners are Mexican. We have that, uh, Kiva. Thank you, baby, but he not gonna go. No, I've been to Mad. I, I've been there. I go there. I go to Plaza Azteca all the time. There's one right there in uh, King of Pressure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna text Brandon in the group. Let's go to. We're gonna go there. Oh. I'm gonna text. I'm gonna go to Plaza Azteca. What we gonna? I'm having Mexican tomorrow. Well, cancel it. I can't. It's a little date. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Why y'all can't go to Olive Garden or something? Why you gotta go to this? I, I, don't, do, don't ever disrespect me like that. I don't understand y'all issue with the Olive Garden. I, I honestly would go to Olive Garden right now. I'm not against... So, it's levels of the shit. I'm not against a full on... um Ooh. A full on, you know, a chain restaurant. I'm not against it. But it's Carrabba's. I'm choosing Carrabba's every fucking time over Olive Garden. Well, I only eat Carrabba. During the pandemic, I eat Carrabba's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
Not no more, though. Not no more? You done? <laughs> you done with that? Some change. <laughs> <laughs> So my Olive Garden is not always intestinal friendly. Not always. What you be eating from Olive Garden? See, y'all probably do too much. I just get to tour Italy. That's all I like. Yeah, I don't do too much. Y'all, I know y'all do too much. I mean, I ever disrespect <laughs> Italy. Italians are probably upset. Why the fuck don't don't call don't get nothing Italian at the Olive Garden? Just go and get you your soup and breadsticks. Well, what could they be upset about? Food is food. No. <laughs> And no, that and that's your problem. That's why your gut like that. <laughs> if you if you are Italian, Chinese, Black, whatever, African American, African, Jamaican, and nasty food, if you are any of these people and you have issues with the restaurants and what they're doing, then you should get out there. You should open up the restaurant and you should feed us. But if you're not gonna do that, then shut up and eat the Olive Garden. I like magic. You you probably go you go to Panda Express. I'm fine now. And the Express. I think it is disgusting. Mm -hmm. I would never, ever, ever eat a fast food Chinese or Asian inspired store unless it's in the mall. I'll do that. But I am never. And that's where you have Panda Express because they be in the mall. Nope. Say you ain't never had it. Yeah, I eat the like hibachi in the mall or whatever. I don't eat the Panda Express in the mall. And and Brawley, I said Jamaican food is nice. We've been through this already. I'm not going to do it again. It's the Brawley don't. The boy, the Brawley, for, for the record, the boy praises Taco Bell yeah. and the ground beef from Taco Bell. Too. Well, I know that gut too. I don't even, yeah, I don't actually probably take it back because you be eating chicken fingers and shit. You know, I, I, what's wrong with that? Yes, it is. <laughs> Throw up. <laughs> Toya, I bet I would do. Yeah, when Toya gets steaks. Toya be in the restaurant with the steak and she be cutting and the whole table be moving. Her steak be well done. I'm telling you, she don't get <laughs> Her steak be well done, y'all. And I don't eat P.F. Chang's either. No, thank you. P.F. Chang's was the move back when I was in high school. Well, they used to, I used to work at the UTC Mall. Shout out uh, at, the, at the Lady Foot Locker UTC Mall in San Diego. P.F. Chang's was right down the block. So this had to be every bit of 20 years uh -huh. plus. So when you went to P.F. Chang, you thought she was doing something a little fancy. And that little food used to be hitting on my lunch breaks. I ain't gonna hurt you, but today we ain't doing no motherfucking P.F. Chang's. What um, are we talking about? Last thing my Jen said, you can't go to the mall for food. Not no more. They closed them all down. Yeah. I sure did. It, it, them, them food courts be dry looking. And honestly, the last mall I went to and I saw a food court... Back in the day, your eyes used to light up and, oh, I can't wait. I really went in there with judgy eyes. In the mall? Yes, at the food court. Like, wait. <laughs> wait, back in the day when we used to, we used to work at Planet Fitness um, in the Northeast, and uh -huh. like, outside of it, there's like restaurants. One of them is McDonald's, there's Taco Bell, there's a Wendy's. And I used to be like, ugh, that is so disgusting disgusted that they have a mcdonald's outside of the gym like oh that makes me so upset but i'll oh, be going to bell eating after the gym <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't eat cheesecake at all mm -mm. what i'm margin said cheesecake and i don't do cheesecake oh, i love cheesecake but i really <laughs> want y'all with the cheesecake i want y'all to stop with this cheesecake factory i need that to stop i don't like that it's disgusting and every time i I hear someone say, oh, the Cheesecake Factory, it's like, and they look at it as a treat, like we doing something. If you ask me to the Cheesecake Factory, trust me, we're not, you ain't doing nothing. What you did was cancel the plans that we had. Like, don't, another guy I was talking to, I gotta get on with my, I gotta get with my dating mentor, Dill. You know, I'm kind of a little bougie with somewhat of the wine selections. I guess this guy thought he was going to razzle-dazzle me with his selections. I said, Yes, your selections are trash. It's all Kool Aid. So the only mess they did was the cat's head. Everything else is Kool Aid. So this is why, like me, like you know my, you know what I do wine wise. My wine comes like this jug that's like massive. It's like massive jug that I drink wine out of. But y'all cannot see. You're probably gonna Carlo Rossi. I used to do that back in the day. I'm not against it now. But y'all can't see me when it comes to tequila. My tequila collection yeah. is impeccable. My wine, on the other hand. I'm still out there drinking motherfucking Kool Aid. I'm still in Kool Aid with the bottle, and there you go. 
A mar there's a place called the Cheesecake Lady that people rave rave about in Philadelphia. Marchan, if you ever, I don't know if she ships them out or anything. The best cheesecake I have ever had in my life, and this is a girl coming from a girl whose mother growing up. My mom used to make a cheesecake for her and a cheesecake for me. <laughs> yeah, I used to be. I used to love cheesecake. Now, now I'm not so much. Really? Oh, Dex, I love, love cheesecake. But yes, guys, if you ever get a chance, the cheesecake lady, you want it. You want it, and your gut's going to need it. And in fact, after the gym on Saturday, guess where I'm going? <laughs> got, got it. You got it. I got it. Eat it. It ain't going to eat itself. No, I'm sad. <laughs> All right. Don't now I think you savage have a radish. So I can go watch, uh, what do I watch? Married at First Sight. Oh, that used to be my show. One day, you know what? I might sign up for that show. We'll see. It was always a thing, but I was on lockdown for the 11 years. That would have been disrespectful. I might audition now. Tuscan Leather just joined. If you guys are interested in men's cologne, like this is your guy to go to. He knows, sure. he knows all the colognes to go to. Come on. You need a men's cologne vendor, Tuscan Leather. That's your guy. He's going to got you. He's like the Kevin Samuels of cologne. Oh, he, he'll like, get you. He's like the Kevin Samuels of life, too. Don't do not do this to my guy, Tuscan Leather. Oh, He's not like this. He is not a Kevin Samuels. God rest his soul, but won't he do it? Kevin Samuels, though? I don't know, but oh, I didn't. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I said, Wait, can I say one? What did he say? Can I say one more thing before we go, though? Uh -huh. I did. I, I did know that Kevin Samuels died, but you know who I did not know who died, and I just found that I do the Grammys. Oh, uh -huh. Coolio. I did not know he was dead. they put Coolio on the screen. I said, I said, I, I think they might have messed up. I think that was supposed to be somebody else, and I googled it. I was like, oh, he's yeah, he's been dead for a minute. And I was like, oh damn, I didn't know that. Don't that shit. Be you up every time. This is why I kind of walk up. This time I saw the mem memorandum, whatever they call it, on, but I went and got me a snack and I went back. <laughs> but because every year I be feeling super, I be like, damn, you not? Damn, I feel like a bad person. So I kind of be like, if I don't, like, if I just avoid it, you in my mind, you're still living your beautiful, happy yeah. life. Yeah. Um, I streamed um, Gangster's Paradise. I'm like, I did my part to give his family a little bit of money. After you did. Even though you might. You might have, well, at least you didn't get do a um, they see that, yeah, in a year. Coolio dead! <laughs> That's how I felt. I just named the Coolio song Gangster's Paradise. That's the only one that I know. Oh. Yes, that was only one. News to me. He said another. He, I thought he only had one song. I did not What's know. What's the that. other one? So I said, "Mother, you gonna you gonna you gonna get lead us out oh, he would with this other one? Name another he, Coolio, and don't Google it. No, no, he could do it. Like he knows this stuff. Oh, okay. Well, give us one for the road. I'm not gonna listen to it. <laughs> Is it really? really? No, it definitely does have another song because Gangsters Paradise. We knew Coolio before then. You you knew Coolio before then. Come along and ride on the fantastic side, slide, 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 slide. That's Coolio. He also does the theme song for All Dead, or or for King and the Kill. What? Was it? Yeah, right? I think it might have been. Because yeah. All That was TLC. That was my yeah. shit. But. The Kill. And I'm pretty sure he was in the video, and I think they were in like Universal Studios or something like that. Well, no, that sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So Gangsta's Paradise, Fantastic Voyage, whatever it's called, and then Kenan and Kel. God rest his soul. He gave us a he gave us a legendary song. We know that. Yeah. And at the um, end of the day, that's all you could ask for. My producer is telling me that he had quite a few songs. I remember Mom I'm in love with a gangster, I believe that it is. Um all it's all the way life, bright as the sun cruising. Ghetto Highlights, Club Servant. Oh, here's a song called The One. I'll definitely listen to that. Um, and then All Here It Goes, and that's the Kenny Nikel song. So rest in peace, Coolio. Guys, go stream his music. Let his family get that money. Yes. Dex, look at you. Always trying to put some on. So you are so generous. Like King Cash App, drop off. 
You always want to make sure everybody gets paid. And for that, Dexter, you will be blessed. You will. Black History Month. Come on. Got to do it right. And the rest of the after this, fuck you, man. So <laughs> get it? How you get it? All right. Just play. Love you guys so much. YouTubers. We love you. To the moon and back. You guys that pop on and see us every week. We love you. More consistency is coming. We got some updates coming. You guys might see us on Monday through Friday. Oh. Did not see Friday. Huh? Friday. I got pants on. They're just shorts. Shit, I ain't up here naked. I ain't, I ain't a freaking leak like that, sir. You ain't got no pants on. <laughs> you know you see us up here. What you mean I ain't got no pants? Look, ma, no pants. I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, All right. You want to give him a follow, guys. He's the most entertaining person ever. He's he damn sure is. And makes amazing brownies. Bye, guys. Love you. Actually, I need to text him now that I think about it. Yeah, let us know what's going on. Are, are they? Are we back? He's like gummy bears. Yeah, we don't. Are we back, Tuscan mother? Let us know. Mm -hmm. He tweeted the other day. We're going off. The he tweeted the other, tweeted the other day. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm in town, but I'm not Lincoln. And he's dead serious, so he probably huh? won't respond back to our text messages. You know how they get. You know how they get. Tuscan leather. We love you, Marjan, Ali, Kipper, everybody who pulls up, mommy and daddy. There's a bunch of names on here. You know, we love you guys. Please, we will be back next week. Ooh, child. My hair is looking like I was just on a playground beating up some girl or something. You know how the kids, you send the kids off to school and their hair is nice and put together. And by the end of the day, what the fuck happened to you? Anywho, sorry. That's um, the ramble. Next Bye. next Wednesday, I think it's Valentine's Day. No, no next, next Tuesday. Tuesday is Valentine's Day. And you, are you still taking off of work? For Valentine's Day? I thought you said you were, were taking off. To do what? To be in love? Shit. <laughs> no thank you <laughs> well, that's okay I'll be home lonely home. right here <laughs> <laughs> right here on this couch in the kitchen in the kitchen yes we love you we'll see you next Wednesday six ish Love you guys, YouTubers. Go subscribe. Bro, See you later. Hold on, Broly. If you're available next Tuesday, please get on so you can talk to us about how you feel about Valentine's Day. No. I would love to hear. That. Next Wednesday, Broly, and then he'll have all of his Valentine's Day festivities out of the way because you know that Broly, he's a real romancer out there. So yes. he might got a few lined up for for that day. So come back next week. We'll all give a Valentine's Day update about how you spent it, right? <laughs> Take care. Bye, everybody.